was a freaking awesome loan officer? Gareth Beal. This is my coon ass brother from way back. Absolutely adore this man. There is no better, especially in his area. If you get a chance, you really need to reach out and meet Gareth Beal. Hey, Gareth, I really appreciate you uh, taking time out of your day to do this and help me on this. It, it means the world to me. Uh, I'm going to go through and ask you a series of questions. You have not been coached. You have not seen these. And I'm going to try and get the real Gareth Beal reactions out of it. Um, yeah. Some of the things may need to be edited. I already know that. Uh, we're not going to go into uh, uh, your uh, uh, unicorn type thing. <laughs> but uh, uh, let's just do the best we can and um, answer, the, answer the questions that are put in front of you and I both to, to ask and answer the best you can from inside of here uh, to let the world know who I know of Gareth Beal. Sure. Now, I kind of know this one. Um, I know that it's something that's important to you, and I know that you've been uh, uh, helping people throughout your part of the country your whole life. What makes you stand out from some of the other loan officers in your part of the country? I think, honestly, I think it's my background, um, where I came from. I think um, one of the things that's unique to me, especially in this area, is my background in marketing. Um, I was a marketing director for a company for a long time, for 10 years. And I really think that's an important part of being a loan officer, especially in today's market. Um, I think a lot of people need to put, you know, that marketing title in there with their regular loan officer title. You know, that's where our business is coming from. And I've taken it on to kind of share that, you know, that's the difference that I can bring to the table between myself and other loan officers is I want to share what I know about marketing, um, both on social media and in the real world. To, to my real estate agent partners so that we can grow and together. This, this isn't supposed to be a secret, right? I don't want it to be a secret. And I wanna share that information with my referral partners. That's an awesome answer. Uh, I don't think I could have answered that one any different. It was absolutely perfect. Uh, and that's really who you are. You don't hide anything. You don't keep anything to yourself. Uh, you will share the knowledge that you gain because you and I travel all over the country together and separately learning this. Uh, we spend a lot of money out of our pocket to learn what and how and who that is. Um, and I think that's very important to share that and to give that away. And it sounds like you feel the same way. Oh, without a doubt. You know, it's, you know, the, the thing is, is if I kept all this to myself, then, you know, I'm going to be able to make a living and make a good living. But if I want to, as a loan officer, get to that next level, the next step is to teach five, six, seven, 15, 20 agents what it is I'm doing on a day-to-day -day basis. And in return, obviously, I would like an opportunity to earn their business. So, you know, it's, it's the way of, it's honestly, it's a way of building a sales force um, without actually having to pay them out of your own pocket. Agree, agree. And it's it's one of those things, it's the law of reciprocity. It, it, if it, The more people you help, the more people that will help you. Uh, without a doubt. So, what technology do you love using that is provided to you by Hancock Mortgage Partners? My By far, my favorite thing is the app. Okay. The, the app... Um, because it, it essentially lets me work 24 um, seven with, without you know, having to be on call, so to speak. You know, if it's a problem, I'm obviously gonna be there, but you know, my agents have started to realize that you know, it's real simple to send a link to an app to a client that needs to get me information or if they need a pre-call over the weekend or anything along those lines. Um, that's been a real game changer. You know, there's a lot of times where loan officers generally work, you know, Mondays through Fridays. Um, and some of them are the ones who say, I'm going to work 24, seven, seven days a week. But, you know, sometimes that's just not possible. If I'm at an LSU game, you probably don't want me talking to your client. So, you know, getting, getting that pre-app 
to the client and letting them feel that information ahead of time is, is makes a huge difference on a week to week basis. The other thing that I really, um, that I really love to be honest with you is, is our black box stuff. You know, that's been a game changer, especially here. I'm starting to get, um, agents that are asking more and more about it, uh, to the point where I'm having to say, look, you know, we're going to do another round of these and, but I need to explain to you how this is going to work. I'm just not going to give this to you. We're going to work together and we're going to work these together. You know, my, we're, we're seeing a huge number of, of um, leads that are really turning into something, you know, that tangible to pre-approvals because, you know, I have an assistant here and we're working them together on a day-to-day -day basis. And they're a lot stronger than I ever really thought they would be. All right. So I'm going to clarify on this real quick. When you talk about your app, you're talking about your mobile app, your phone app that you have that you can put on anybody's phone, anybody's tablet, and it's co-branded. You know, it's it's really it's a co-branded app that, um, you know, and and there's a I know a lot of mortgage companies have you know mobile apps. They're a dime a dozen, but the the thing I like one of the things I really like about ours is the fact that it is co-branded. If I'm working with a real estate agent and they send out the app and all their information and their pictures on top. A, all these, all these agents are a whole lot better looking than me. I want their picture above mine anyway. But B, you know, it's a lot, it, people want to buy a house. People want houses. People don't necessarily want a 30 year mortgage. You know, that is not an easy sell. So, you know, the, it's, it's one of those things that I tell my agents, look, don't think of this as my app. Think of it as yours. You want, you want people to use these calculators. You want them to be, to get to this first because we now control everything. You know, we control what they look at. We know what it is they want. And we use that information to, to kind of push, put, push them through the process from, you know, thinking about buying a house to actually going and looking at houses being pre-approved. Agree. The other thing that you mentioned was uh, the black box. So to clarify, uh, internally, we call it the secret black box. And what it does is we spend a tremendous amount of money uh, gathering purchase money leads for our loan officers, branch managers across the country. But we can only do part of it. We can only do the mortgage on those leads. We're not licensed to sell houses. We're not licensed to tell people the price of houses, how many bedrooms, even show houses. So we have to have that licensed real estate agent to work with as that referral partner to help us close these leads. Is that, is that accurate? Absolutely. Absolutely. Now you just hit on something that, that actually leads into this next question. And I think the timing's perfect. What changes are you going to do to increase the amount of leads for you and your referral partners in this next quarter, in this next year? Um, one of the big things that I do, and it's, it's, it's around Baton Rouge. I, I've had other loan officers ask me about it and they, they're hearing about it is I'm giving, um, weekly modern marketing classes to, um, to real estate agents. Um, it's a six week course. It uh, goes through everything from Facebook to Instagram, to Snapchat to video. Um, and it touches on, um, what to do with these, with these leads and what the, uh, sales process really is, you know, we, we, as people in the real estate uh, industry, we see everything very, very linear. You know, we see, you want to buy a house, you get pre-approved, uh, you look at a house, you find a house, you close on a house, you move on to the next deal, right? That's how we look at things. But to the buyer, to the consumer, that is not nearly as linear as we'd like it to be. There's a lot of thought process that goes into that. And so, you know, the, the actual sales cycle of buying a home isn't, you know, such so straightforward. So, you know, that's part of the education of, you know, modern marketing is making sure that you understand that and you, fo you follow up and you stay, um, you know, you stay the course. It's, you know, it's FU money. You know, there's, there's a lot of uh, loan offs. Chad in Houston talks about FU money all the time. It's that follow up money that is part of, you know, the, this actual sales cycle. And that's one of the things I touch on, you know, in this six week course. So, you know, my plan for the next, you know, next quarter is honestly to do more. I've done four or five of these, I'm finished up. 
I just started a new class this week. And um, so I'm going to continue doing that. And as I add agents into, you know, into my fold, so to speak, you know, as referral partners, um, they obviously get introduced to our secret black box leads and how to work them. And, you know, along with that is, is a, you know, the other things that Hancock Mortgage does that's different than other companies like, you know, perpetual machine and things along those lines. Like once, once the agents and I start working together and that relationship is formed, you know, the world to them really opens up into what Hancock Mortgage is all about. Awesome. Awesome. Thank that. That was absolutely perfect. I, 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 I you know, it's, it's one of those ones. Uh, I, I'm the guy who builds a lot of this stuff and puts it together and uh, you just got me all excited about it again. <laughs> well, I don't know. I have um, I have three or four agents that are talking to Warren now that, um, you know, we, we're starting to collect their their um, their databases. And that might some of them are active. Um, I have a few EXP agents that have active you know, leads that they want to put in. And then I have some others that are like, okay, but well, these are from, you know, last year or six months back. And I was like, look, those are still, we're not going to look at those as dead leads, so to speak. Those are leads that, you know, you don't know that those people aren't ready to buy a house right now. Like I said, the sales cycle of purchasing a home is not nearly as linear as we think. Agree. And one of the things that I think that the world may not know or may not remember uh, is the fact that, that you guys flooded you had a horrible flood and 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 something that may be a year or two years old uh may have come before during uh the flood may have happened while insurance is uh having issues and problems things like that so by no means are those dead leads that they should be because those people may still need help you know what's you know what's crazy is um you know <clears throat> we look because of the way our business is, we kind of look back at last month as, you know, what can we expect coming up? And one of the advantages I have is, you know, my father-in-law is an appraiser, my wife and my in-law, my mother-in-law have a title company. So we can kind of see the flow. Like if my father-in-law is having a busy month, I know I can expect a busy month and, you know, the title company is going to expect a busy month following that. Um, so I did some research and in January of 2018, there were only 500 sales in Baton Rouge area. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so the inventory is extremely low here. Um, there are still people that are fighting with insurance, um, trying to get their homes back together, trying to decide what they're gonna do. And people just don't realize, especially outside of the greater Baton Rouge area, how long this takes you know, to get from you know, we lost 140,000 homes, um, you know, in August of 2016. And here we are in March of 2018, and we still don't have the inventory we had before that. Oh, you should. And I promise you, you haven't built back a quarter of that. Now, there's two things I want to hit on you just mentioned. So um, uh, the first one, you, you, you're talking about your modern marketing classes that you're doing. Uh, where are you doing those at? I have um I have a classroom that we put together here that can handle up to eight students or eight realtors, however you want to talk about it. Um, I also what I prefer to do is actually do them at the the real estate office. Um, it's it's more comfortable for the real estate agent. They you know they ask a lot more questions, um, and also you know you see other agents that are trying to figure out exactly what's going on you know behind the closed door, so to speak, but. You know, it's a, that's where I prefer to do it is either at their office, but if there's not enough, if I can't get a broker to let me in there and there, are, you know, we know that there are companies that have MSAs with mortgage companies and they're not going to let me come in and give a class. That's fine. I, I have a classroom built right here in my office um, and we'll, we'll do it there. I've, I've done tw two already um, in the last two months here at the office. Well, that's perfect because you'll either go to them or they can come to you either way. Whatever, whatever I need to do to get the information out there, I'm willing to do. Now, you just said something else that made me made my ears perk up, and it sounded to me like you may be one of the luckiest human beings in the world. So you said that your father-in-law is an appraiser, your mother-in-law and wife uh, have a title company. So because of HVCC and Dodd-Frank, 
it was legally not legal for you to talk to your in-laws or your wife. Nope. That was one of the greatest I things. For them in years. I, I personally didn't care for HVCC or Dodd-Frank. I think it really tore up our industry. But for you, it was kind of a blessing. It really was. You should, you should see the disclosure I have to make everybody sign. <laughs> All right. Now, here's one that I know, I, I think I know this answer. And if you don't give me the answer I'm looking for, I'm going to drag it out of you. But um, what do you love most about being a loan officer? Um, helping vets. It's, it's really what I love to do. Um, it, you know, a huge amount of my uh, volume is dealing with veterans. It's VA loans. Um, I think, you know, it's, it's essentially, it was actually the first loan I ever did as a mortgage officer was a VA loan. And it was actually because nobody else in the office wanted to deal with it. This was back when loans were really easy to do and uh, things have obviously changed since then, but um, you know, it's, it's something that I've become passionate about. Um, it's something that I learned a lot about. I may not know, you know, the ins and outs of a USDA loan, to be honest with you. You know, I have, you know, I have plenty of underwriters and plenty of people to ask questions about, but I get calls all the time from other loan officers or other real estate agents saying, Hey, I have a VA loan I'm having issues with. Can you help? And every single time, without a doubt, I'm going to help. It's more important that that veteran gets into a home than it is that I make whatever the compensation would have been for that loan. Here's something that uh, a lot of people may not know about you. I know this. Uh, most of your colleagues uh, know this, but I, I want this to be known. You yourself are a United States Army veteran. Yep. Um, and... Not only that, but my assistant is, uh, he's a retired warrant officer, 70 years old, still kicking strong, you know? So yeah, we are, mo a lot of my agents are veterans too. We, um, I just did a, um, I'm not sure you may or may not know this, but I do a weekly Facebook series uh, called Red Stick Ride Along. And yesterday we did uh, Derek Overstreet, who was special forces and he's been an agent for two or three years now. Um, we went to lunch together, a video recorded it. Um, he, he actually comes to the office and, you know, shows me his new guns. He's real active in uh, Storm 22, which is a nonprofit for veterans who are having difficulties. So um, that's something also I'm planning on getting involved in here in 2018. So, yeah, it's a, we have a strong, you know, in this office, we're pro-vet through and through. <laughs> This company, as far as I'm concerned, that's one of the things you and I do. We travel across this country uh, learning more and teaching more about that. Uh, if I remember correctly, you're a certified military mortgage boot camp instructor. Yep, that's correct. Um, we um, actually, we try and once a quarter, we, it's not just, we don't just give the, the VA information to real estate agents. Um, we're actually going beyond that. Uh, once a quarter or at least twice a year, we try and go out to the units, the reserve and uh, National Guard units that are in the Baton Rouge area and give a class on the advantages to the VA loan. You know, there are some myths that people don't understand about it. And the way we see it is if we can get that information directly to a Marine or directly to an, uh, an Army officer or Army vet who's coming out, then they know ahead of a time what to expect, you know. So one of the things I'd like for you to hit on real quick, uh, Doug Cook and I have uh, spoke about this many times. Um, so explain it to me. Are you telling me that somebody who is in the reserves can qualify for a VA loan? Oh yeah, without a doubt. Um, even if they're still you know active in the in the guard or active in the reserves, if their points are there, um, then they are eligible for the VA loan. Um, if they're putting down a down payment, a lot of times it's still better off to go VA. You know, that's that's one of the myths that I just don't understand. People can't understand here is that, you know, there very rarely is, does it you know behoove you to not go VA. Are there some circumstances? Sure. But it's a it's, you know, pretty unique and we need to look at it no matter what. I'd like to know whatever that is, and I'm sure that there is something. I'm sure somebody can come up with something to prove me wrong. But in my opinion, the VA loan is the best product, period. No questions about it. I haven't come up, come across it yet, but I'm sure it's probably out there somewhere. Um, 
But if I ever do, I'm going to write it down. It's a great idea. All right. So here's something, and, and you are like the rest of your colleagues here at Hancock. Uh, you are one of the most giving human beings. Uh, I will watch you teach, train, help somebody else that doesn't even wear the same shirt as you. Um, so here's the question. Do you have any advice or tips to help other loan officers? Recognize your strengths. Um, I, I spent, you know, coming from the military, you know, if you think about what the military does, or let's talk, let's go back to basic training. You know, the, the drill sergeants or drill instructor's job is to break you down, figure out your weakness and strengthen that weakness. That's, that's what their job is. That's what they want. Um, and coming up, you know, and becoming a loan officer, that was a hard thing for me to overcome because I would find out what my weakness is and try and make that better. Um, one of the things that it's taken me years to figure out is focus on my strengths. I can have somebody else handle the stuff that I do poorly. You know, they, there are people out there that handle the stuff I do poorly much better than I will ever do, no matter how much time I focus on it. So if I focus on my strengths and as a loan officer, if you focus on your strengths and bring somebody in that can handle your weaknesses, then you'll be much more successful. And it, that's been a tough one for me to swallow. I have to be honest with you. I, I don't like accepting help. Um, I think I can probably do it better than most, but it's taken some time to realize, okay, you're, you're a moron. You need to go ahead and get somebody smarter at doing this because you, you can't handle it. I, I'm in total agreement with you on that one. And I, I, I can, I can actually uh, uh, vouch for this one. Uh, I myself, uh, I, I, I may not have the best wording, but I, I feel that I'm pretty good at communicating and I'm uh, not afraid of anything. But if I had to process the loan, process the loan, I could process the hell out of about one loan a month. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I agree. It's a, um... I think I have a phobia against a stack, a pile of paper, to be honest with you. Oh, I'm with you. You we're on the, we're the same exact page, same exact page. This next question is something that, uh, I wasn't real keen on. I didn't like the idea of it. I wanted to pull it out of here and your colleagues not only insisted that it stay in, uh, they, they mandated that it stayed in. So it's a very self-serving question and, uh, I am not a huge fan of it, but here goes. What do you love about working at Hancock Mortgage Partners? Um, it's a it's it's a family. You know, I, I don't care what you say. Hancock Mortgage Partners is a family. And, and I'm not just saying between, uh, you know, myself and other branch managers or myself and the loan officers. This is the easiest company that I've ever worked for that I can get in touch with somebody over operations or administration, you know going back to the stuff that I do poorly, you know, it's not just getting the loan done. It's, it's and everything from payroll to benefits to anything along those lines. I've been at companies where literally there was a wall between the loan officer and operations. You had to go through a different channel just to get there. And that's not the case. You know, I, I, you don't understand how nice it is to get an email every single month saying, hey, here's an updated phone list of people to connect with or, or people to call for these different scenarios. And honestly, that's been a huge difference because if I need, you know, every once in a while, I might need a favor, so to speak, to get something closed or I may need something to become a trailing dot. Uh, you know, it's not hard to get in touch with somebody who can make that decision. Um, and it's not just the loans, you know, that I, like I said, it's if if chief has a problem with his payroll, I can get in touch with somebody that morning and get it fixed so that we can move on and get back to actually doing loans and not worrying about whether or not, you know, our time is in right correctly or something along those lines. So it's a it's a family across the board, not just between the loan officers, but literally, you know, everybody that's listed on that phone tree. I feel like I can reach out and get help from. But that's just for middle management and administrative. That's not for, uh, you can't get a hold of Mr. Hancock or anything like that, can you? Oh, no, he, he calls me. What are you talking about? <laughs> the owner of the company calls you? Yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah, I've had uh, Mr. By Hancock call me, you know, on my cell phone and just check in and see what's going on. So, 
No, it, literally, it starts at the top of the uh, the top of the phone tree and works its way down. That's one of the ones for me that was very hard. Donnie, you need to know, I'm way down on that phone tree. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of the things that was uh, hard for me uh, about five years ago when I made the decision that this was going to be my forever home. And uh, when I came over here and I would be out on the road or something like that, and all of a sudden my cell phone would ring and it was Myatt Hancock on caller ID and I'm thinking, oh crap, what'd I do, what'd I do, what'd I do, oh crap, what'd I do? <laughs> and he's just calling to check up on me, see if I needed anything, see if everything was going okay, see if he could do something for me. And it truly took me a, a good while to get used to that. I've only been with a few different companies in this business, about four different companies. And um, it was something that was uh, completely different for me. I'd be sitting in my office when I first started here and Myatt would come by and say, good morning, how are you? And I'm thinking, I'm fine. Why? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is there something, you know? That, then what did I do wrong? Exactly. I didn't mean it, whatever it is. What did you hear? <laughs> that first time you get a phone call and the uh, caller ID says, Mike Hancock, you think to yourself, man, I am getting fired from the big guy. That, that, that's impressive. <laughs> All right. What is one obstacle that you had to overcome as a loan officer? Giving up control, without a doubt. It's, uh, you know, to, to be successful. Uh, especially now, it is not easy to get a loan on the table. Um, so, you know, letting somebody else handle um, collecting some docs or or getting them to the right people or or anything along those lines, that's always been a job that, you know, for the longest time I was in this industry thinking, I don't want, you know, anybody talking to my clients. Those are my clients. And I've realized here that, if you trust the people that are, um, you know, talking to your clients, they're still your clients. You're just giving them the best uh, service that you can. And, and that, that was hard for me to overcome, but it was definitely a good decision once I actually made it. Awesome. That's a great answer. I, I, I can see that and I actually, that relates very well to me. So here's one that's really going to throw you off. You're going to laugh at it. Uh, it, it is a, a funny, strange question, but every time the answers have just come out just absolutely beautiful. <laughs> Did you always want to be a mortgage loan officer? If so, why? If not, what were you pursuing before this? Did anybody ever answer that with, yes, I've always wanted to be a loan officer? <laughs> I have never in my career of 24 years met anyone that actually put themselves in this position because they wanted to, or it was their dream. I never remember hearing anybody when I was in school saying, God, I can hardly wait till I graduate to become a loan officer. I, I can't imagine. I can't, I can't imagine sitting in the high school counselor's office and saying, Hey, I really like getting kicked in the nuts every day. I think I want to be a loan officer. <laughs> I, I will tell you, I'll go even farther than that. I had a high school principal that threw me out of school one day that told me the best I could ever hope for was to be a bouncer at a nightclub. I was, I had that job. I was pretty damn good at that one. I actually had that one to myself for a little while, but, uh, uh, I, you know, it's one of those ones. I'm really not a fan of uh, our school systems. I think they're pretty much a joke. Um, and, uh, I, I would really like to go back and, uh, uh, talk to that man again, see if I could help him out with a loan, whether it be personal or for his, uh, for his, uh, home. That would be, that would be so much fun. No, I, I did not grow up thinking I wanted to be a loan officer. Um, I, I wanted to, I don't think I wanted to do much to be honest with you. I, you know, um, heck I didn't ever think I'd be married or have kids. So, you know, that was, a. Uh, I think that just, you know, life brings you in certain directions. Um, I was, uh, I'm a salesman. I know that it's been, you know, it's been told to me time and time again. Um, and I became a, but in previous positions, I sold to other salesmen, you know, I sold to real estate agents or I sold to loan officers and I never saw the actual closing, you know, as far as being in real estate, 
I never saw the vet get the keys to the house. I never saw the first time home buyers excitement when they actually, you know, know that they own the, their first home. And so what, I, what ended up happening is I, I got kind of disconnected from it all. I was just dealing with salesmen and salesmen aren't the most loyal people. You know, it, it is what it is. So I kind of got burned out on that. And I looked at becoming a loan officer as a way to uh, still be a salesman, still be in real estate, which is an industry that I do love, and being able to reach out and actually have clients that I know I can, you know, my clients like hearing from me before Christmas, you know, asking them, you know, just telling, wishing them a Merry Christmas, you know. So that's, it's, it's nice to, uh, to talk to a client three months after they purchase a home and it's asking how they enjoy their house. That was, if I was in previous industries, if I did that, they would be like, I don't even know who you are. So that was why I became a loan officer. I, I, that's, that's an awesome, beautiful, wonderful answer. And, and, and I, who would have thought I would have had a beautiful answer? <laughs> me, me, I give you a lot of credit. What is the one piece of advice you would give to someone looking to purchase, let's say their first home, their move up home, their forever home? What's one piece of advice you would give to that person? I, honestly, it would, it would be check, check your, get pre-approved and check what's on your credit. Uh, I, I have a client right now that this is his third house. And the last house he's, he was in for 15 years. Um, and he's had some difficulty wrapping his head around everything that needs to happen for him to purchase his next house. Because obviously 15 years ago, things were a little bit, bit different. But it turns out he's got a couple of collections he didn't know about. His credit score is not really where he thought it was. And it's affecting, it's affecting his rate. It's affecting all these different things that that honestly, if we would have seen this just 60 days ago, we could have fixed it and we would be in a much better place. So even if you're um, buying your third or fourth home, you know, things have changed. You need to do this early. You need to get everything, all your ducks need to be lined up as early as possible so that, you know, you can have a good experience purchasing a home and it makes life so much easier. Buying a home does not have to be complicated. It does not have to be stressful. But it does take some homework and some work on the front end to make it enjoyable on the back end. Agree, agree. You know, it's funny you say that. Uh, I just uh, had uh, my credit pulled here uh, in the past week, and uh, I have always been an 800 credit score, uh, always known that not a problem. And uh, when I saw a copy of my credit report, and my middle score is somewhere around 780, which is still an incredible score, I'm pissed. I'm pissed, and I, I, I'm not kidding you. I actually reached out to uh, a buddy of mine, Billy Alt, who owns a, uh, a credit company, and asked him, you know, how is this possible how I had a mid-800 score, you know, here the other day, and now all of a sudden I'm a high 700, and um, it was one of those ones, and even being in this business, I kind of kicked myself in the butt. Uh, I paid off all my credit cards. Yeah. No, no credit card debt whatsoever. So I had open lines of credit, but I've had no history for over a year of being able to do that. And I knew that I knew that was a bad thing. And I never thought about it when I was in the process of not using the credit that I had available to me. And, and, you know, so even people that have extraordinary credit can lose you know, 40, 50, 60, 70 points by not using their credit. It's not just uh, for people who are, uh, uh, you know, first time home buyers or think they may have a blemish, something like that. Your advice is sound advice for everybody who's paying attention. It, it totally, it, look, losing, here's an odd thing. Losing 40 points is not that big of a deal if you're at 800, right? You're still at 760. But if you're at 700, and you lose 40 points, well, then that's going to change some rate. God forbid you lose any more than that, because now it might affect whether or not you're, you know, there's availability for, for the loan. Um, and, you know, that just comes with, you know, getting everything set ahead of time. You know, having a client say, hey, I'm ready to buy a house. Great. Um, when, what's the earliest we can close? Well, let's take a look and see, because you might not want to move as quickly as you really think you do. 
That's great advice, sound advice, and I think everybody needs to heed that advice. So this is the final question. This is the Bryant Gumbel question. This is the one that I want to try and drag out of you what, what I know about you that others should know, that, that it means something getting to see what's in your heart and what's in your head. Now, a lot of people don't know this. And I'm not going to go into um, the personal things that have happened to you and what you you and your family have had to go through. But I am going to hit on one of them that's probably going to uh, uh, create some problems and some issues. How hard was it for you to stay in the mortgage business after August 2016 and not only losing everything that you had, your cars, your home being flooded, your kids living in a camping trailer. How hard was it for you to stay in the mortgage business and get people happy about buying a home when you couldn't even live in your own home? It was, it was probably one of the hardest things besides, you know, besides having my wife go through cancer treatment and beating cancer. It was, it's the hardest thing that me and my family has ever gone through, you know, um, August 16th, the flood came through my house. Um, and the day after, we, you, you know, some family history. My wife and I lived in the New Orleans area for Katrina. And our house flooded for Katrina. So we had done it before. So the idea was, okay, we, we've done this before. We can do it again. Let's load up the Jeep. Let's go get mops and buckets and bleach and squeegees and get out there and let's go ahead and start cleaning this crap up so we can move on with our life. And her, my son, and I pulled up to the neighborhood. We couldn't even get to the house. And there was still 19 inches of water in the house and it was still rising. So the, the mops might have been, you know, a bit optimistic. So, um, you know, you, you go through and you start doing the right thing, taking pictures, getting, saving whatever you can, moving everything upstairs. And I walked into my son's room and he was picking up toys and wiping them with his pillowcase and putting them on his bed. And I was like, what are you doing? And he goes, well, I don't want to lose this toy. And I said, no, no, look, we, we have flood insurance. It's going to be fine. You know, you, you can't play with these toys as they're covered in flood water. So you know, you tell your family and you tell your son, it's going to be okay, but you really don't know. You know, I, I knew, you know, I knew I'd lost my house. I knew that was going to be a chore. Um, I knew it was going to be a marathon, but being at that point, I didn't know how bad it was going to be. You know, I essentially lost uh, a way of making income um, for a while because everybody else had flooded too. You know, you're talking about, I think, I think in the floods in Houston, I think between 70 and 80,000 homes were flooded. You know, we had double that and we're nowhere near as big as Houston. So, you know, it took, it took a lot of um, marketing outside the area. You start doing loans that you've never thought about doing before um, because you need to bring in an income. You know, you have to, that house note comes no matter what, you know, you're going to pay it no matter what. So it's, it was, it was definitely hard. But to be honest with you, I, I didn't see, I didn't see myself leaving the industry. Not at all. Um, I knew that I needed to diversify and, and start, you know, doing loans outside of the, of the Ascension living scenario. Obviously I learned my lesson there, but the thought of leaving this industry never crossed my mind. I think I'm in it for the long haul. Um, being a loan officer, gave me the ability to make money for my family while my wife was going through cancer treatments. And it also gave me the flexibility that if I needed to get the kids off the bus or if the kids needed to do something, you know, we still made all the soccer tournaments. We still did all that. And I wouldn't have been able to do that in any other industry. I don't think. I, I can completely agree with that. Um, I was going to leave the, uh, the part, that you guys had to go through with your wife out of it. I'm glad you brought it up because I think it's something that, that people need to know. Um, I think if you, I knew you when, when you flooded, I knew you before you flooded. Um, and 
one of the things that I've always just admired and thought the world of about you was you had that smile and that twinkle in your eye before, after, during, and the same one today because you are that person. You are that positive driving force. And it may get tough on you sometimes because people rely on you, but you are that person. You are that reliable person that people can look towards. Hey, I, these, shoulders, these shoulders are broad. They can handle a lot. I'm, I'll, I'll take on most challenges. I, for one, am better off by knowing you and being able to call you my friend and my colleague, and I appreciate you. As I do too, Johnny. This is the reason why Gareth Beal is a freaking awesome loan officer. They just don't get better. He's a family man. He cares about his business. He cares about his veteran customers. He is a veteran. Gareth Beal is a freaking awesome loan officer.